exacerbated by the rise of social media. And Britain's oldest postcard firm, J Salmon, has announced it'll be shutting its doors this December. But the art form isn't going down without a fight. A new competition entitled Your Britain on a Postcard was recently judged by the sometime cultural icon and one of the most influential acts in the history of pop music and much more besides, John Lydon. Fatima Manji went to meet him to get his take on Britain in 2017. Going to the seaside wasn't about the beach, it was really looking at the postcards. I used to love them. And so the prospect of doing a competition judging postcards was thrilling. And so here it is, there's a collection of, of, of some of the many that, that were sent in. And, mm. and I mean, I have deep favourites in all of this and, and others not so much. The ones that involve Brexit were mm. of no interest to me at all. Really? But it's, it's too political. There were, there were a lot involving Brexit though. There were a lot. Me, I would have stayed in Europe, but now I move on. I go with the people. I didn't demand a referendum. I got one. <laughs> and now you got the result of one. <laughs> I mean, that's expressing what you were talking about there. Yeah, but then why have you stuck uh, Dumpy Trumpy into it? Now, how do you feel about Trump these days? Well, he's just... Because you've he's, expressed he's, different opinions. He's not particularly British, so... It... But you're also American, so... Yeah. But that's, I mean, this that's is, this a different is, this situation. Is, but this is about relations between Britain and America. Isn't Carry it? on talking over me. It gets you nowhere. Move on. Well, tell, tell me what you think of Trump these days. It's none of your business, so let's move on, shall we? Oh, no, but I'm just interested because you've said before... Uh, look, please, we're here to discuss British postcards about Britain. All right? But you don't think that Britain and America's relations... Well, when you've worked that out, I'll come back. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. All right. All right, don't be childish. Hmm. I don't need this first thing in the morning. You know, take no for an answer. OK. So how about this one here? This, this is NHS. I don't like it. I love the National Health Service. It saved one of my brothers and it's about to save another from cancer. So the National Health Service is something I fully, fully support. This one is quite moving. I mean, this is, this is all about Grenfell. Uh, this is so sad because there's that ugly scar thing here mm. and this, this grimness. Now, these poor people, they didn't ask for this, this tragedy to happen. Mm. And you've spoken out about working class people being treated badly by yeah. the establishment over the years. Disenfranchised. Do you think it's got worse then? Examples like that don't help, do they? What do you think's gone wrong then in the way that we treat people? We trust politicians and we shouldn't. We never used to. They're talentless leeches and parasites. And so, generally speaking, any time I ever run into a politician, I take great pleasure in dismissing them because I don't think they're here for us. They're there for themselves. Who was the last one you ran into then? <laughs> Nigel Farage. What did you say to him? I said no to the cup of tea and donut he offered me in the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an ugly scenario as a possibility. I wonder what you think of the Prime Minister. I don't think much of her at all. I don't know anything at all about her, and, uh, and I'm glad for that. Are there any politicians you like? No. But Jeremy Corbyn, we haven't mentioned him. He belongs in a student canteen in a really run-down university, and that's about his level. Mm, not a fan, then? No. But do you not think that the lack of trust in politicians has got us to where we are now? No. What Trump's done in America is he's challenged all politicians and he's shown them all to be the, the fakes they are. Mm. That is much bad with Donald. And I never, ever want to see politicians replaced by business people. But the prospect of now realising and magnifying how, how deeply mistrustful politicians are and, and the motivations that, that they use against us, this is, this is an interesting thing. This one with the lion, yeah. uh, this is just terrific. The angry lion. And then the dog collar so it doesn't bite off its own bandage. Yeah. That's superb. That, that is a true postcard. What do you think that postcard. says, though? It, it says Britain's wounded. But do you think Britain's wounded? Yeah, of course it is. But it's on the road to recovery so long as he doesn't take off his collar. You're all optimistic. <laughs> oh, always. <laughs> and what do you think these postcards say about Britain now? The well, kinds of things that people feel about it. There's a lot of people feeling are... down. <laughs> Well, there you go. We are open, please come in. Closed. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly grumpy John Lydon. Unreported World starts a new series in a moment, but first, let's have a look at the weather.